刻むでハモンのビート The JoJo series is well known for its wide array of unique abilities. These vary throughout the series, but the most prominent power featured is definitely the power of stands. Just in the main series alone, there's over 150 unique stand abilities. Most stands are quite well known to anyone who watches or reads JoJo, but there's actually a lot more stand abilities than it may seem, and some are quite obscure. A great deal of stands exist in spin off content, as well as a few that come from very strange sources. So, in this video, I'd like to ask the question what is the most obscure stand? Now, that's a pretty difficult question to ask since it just depends on what you consider to be obscure. There's a few stands in the main series that may be obscure to some, but not to others. Same with stands in the spin offs. Less people may have read it, but it's not like they're hidden or anything. For example, to me, none of these are really that obscure since I know about them all already. But I have no way of really tracking what the average JoJo fan would think. This also differs between the East and West. In Japan, obviously, all JoJo material is available in their language. But in the United States, for instance, there's still a ton of stuff not officially translated, meaning we have to rely on fan translations for some. So while there might not be some kind of definitive answer to this, I think it's still a good opportunity to just take a look at some of the weird stands out there. First, let's stick to the main series and go over some of its obscure stands. A good amount of stands in the main series don't have a name or even fully appear. Maybe it's fitting for the first on this list to be Jonathan's stand, which was used by Dio in Part 3. Despite being used directly on screen, a lot of people seem to forget about this one since it isn't used much again. In fact, its existence has led a lot of people to making the claim that Dio originally was meant to have all stands. This is untrue and has nothing to support it. The reality with this stand is that Araki has said that it is the stand of Jonathan's body. In some way, Jonathan's body is still alive. Which is why it was able to send the distress signal to the other Joe stars and resist Dio's influence. This led to it developing its own stand ability, which Dio took control of. It functions identically to Hermit Purple, although notably, when Dio uses spirit photography with it, he doesn't have to destroy the camera, which may just be due to his experience with it. He uses it in Part 3 to track the movement of the Joe Star party so he can send his minions after them. It also makes one more appearance in the flashback of Dio meeting p o l n a r e f when he uses it to show p o l n a r e f a vision of Jay Guile through a crystal ball. Another in Part 3 that I feel is overlooked is Tenor Sax, the stand of Kenny G. This was an illusion creating stand that trapped the group in the first rooms of Dio's mansion, creating a fake island area for Darby's game as well as a labyrinth. He was easily defeated by Avdol, and that's his last main appearance. However, he does actually come back in the spin off manga Crazy Diamond's Demonic Heartbreak, which takes place shortly before Part 4. Here, he has moved in with Mariah to create a kind of hidden sanctuary for former minions of Dio. In Part 4, the only stand that we could really call obscure is the stand of the Nijimura's father. It has no name and is never shown, but we do know for a fact that he received a stand ability from Dio. After Dio's death and the mutation of the Flesh Bud, he was turned into his monster form and became unable to die. Seemingly, his ability is lost, since he never actually uses it. However, whatever power it was, it may have been related to Dio's goal of finding a special kind of stand user for his Heaven Plan. Another very minor stand comes in Part 5, the electricity ability of the person who found the stand meteor. This stand awoke in 1978 from one of the members of the team in Cape York, Greenland. He very briefly used an ability similar to a stun gun that burned off a doctor's fingers. However, he ended up dying very soon after. Some more unseen abilities are the stands of Sorbet and Gelato. It is inferred that all members of Pashone's assassination squad have stand abilities. However, since Sorbet and Gelato were both killed off screen, their abilities are never shown. Evidently, whatever their powers were, they weren't the kind that would help them escape death by any traditional means. In Part 6, there's a couple of obscure, unnamed stands. First is the stand ability of Emporio's mother. According to Emporio, she had some kind of stand, which Poochie killed her to obtain. However, what this ability was is unknown. 
Pucci has obtained a vast amount of stand discs through this method, which is how we see the other obscure stand. This was a stand that caused the user to instantly boil any water they touch. Pucci gave this stand to Foo Fighters to prevent her from getting water during their fight. Like any stand disc that is used on a stand user, it got ejected shortly after the ability was used and wasn't seen again. Another obscure stand comes from Part 7. This one is talked about in a story told by Mountain Tim, about a man who entered the Devil's Palm searching for emeralds and developed a stand ability. After his ability killed multiple people, he shot himself out of regret. Oddly enough, this ability is very similar to the stand Tomb of the Boom, which led to Mountain Tim recognizing the similarity between its victims. However, it's unknown what its ability actually was. It's possible that the stand actually was Tomb of the Boom, and the Emerald Searcher was given the stand just like how all three members of the Boom Boom family were. Those are all the really obscure ones in the main series, but really if they're featured in the main series of JoJo, I can't really see them being that obscure. We need to go a bit deeper to find the really obscure ones. There's been a couple of spin-off manga based on JoJo, which do feature unique stand abilities. First is Crazy Diamond's Demonic Heartbreak, the prequel to Part 4 starring Josuke and Whole Horse. Here we have the stand used by the parrot, Pet Sounds. This is a bird that worked under Dio, and was owned by the same trainer as Pet Shop. During the events of the manga, it escapes from its cage, and Whole Horse travels to Morio to find it. The stand is able to make someone live through something it has seen in the past. These include multiple events from during Part 3, such as when Wilson Phillips ran over the pedestrians, or the scene when Whole Horse tried to shoot Dio. The ability takes the form of punch cards that are expelled when the person is freed from the ability. Not a lot is known about this ability yet, and so far it doesn't even have a name. There may actually be more abilities in this story, but that still remains to be seen. Another obscure stand comes from the one-shot manga Fujiko's Bizarre Worldly Wisdom. It's called Bad Romance, and is the stand of the prisoner Fujiko Fujiyama. She's an artist, and anyone who receives one of her drawings will have their mental state be controlled by any drawing she makes of them. Pucci gave her this ability to try and make her target Jolene. However, instead, Fujiko ended up infatuated with Jolene and started drawing erotic art of her. Eventually, her infatuation became religious, and she started drawing Jolene as a goddess, making her heal from the injuries she had gotten. After seeing how this completely backfired, Pucci removed her ability. The next stand comes from a chapter of the spin-off manga Thus Spoke Kashibe Rohan titled DNA. Here, Rohan is approached by Yukiko to tell him about a friend of hers whose daughter has strange abilities. The little girl named Mao has strange features like a lack of eyebrows and upper lashes, and a small tail. She only speaks in reverse, and she walks with silent footsteps that soak everywhere she walks with water. Whenever her tail is touched, it causes her to camouflage. The mother asks Rohan to cure Mao, but he refuses since these traits aren't due to a genetic defect, but are actually the shape of her heart, and what he calls a kind of visible stand ability. What Rohan says here is pretty interesting, since it opens up a lot of other things to being stand abilities as well. I went over this in my video about what counts as a stand, but the gist is that a lot of other things we see in Thus Spoke Shibe Rohan, like the various yokai and possessions Rohan encounters, could also actually be stand abilities. So maybe we could put those on a different tier of abilities that aren't even considered to be stands. Next is one from the spin-off one-shot, Rohan Goes to Gucci. In this, Rohan goes to a Gucci workshop with a bag that used to belong to his grandmother. The bag is home to a phenomenon where if you put money inside, it disappears. The employee informs Rohan that this is actually one of three special bags created by a genius Gucci artisan, and that Rohan may not know the correct way to use it. But Rohan doesn't care and has the bag fixed. Later, Rohan realizes that the bag actually had a stand ability that performs an equivalent exchange. Whatever money it eats comes back to you in an equal amount of good fortune. However, since the bag was fixed, it no longer does this and was only fulfilling its last remaining exchanges. So while this weird stand from a Gucci tie-in chapter of the Rohan spin-off is pretty obscure, I think the thing that's even more obscure here is the fact that it was not one of a kind, but one of only three of this bag to exist. So there are presumably still two more bags with stand abilities out there, as well as possibly more stand-wielding products made by the unknown genius artisan. 
Okay, here's a really obscure one. This comes from Jump Multi World, an event held to commemorate the 25th anniversary of Shonen Jump. Araki's contribution is a four-panel manga starring Josuke. Here, Josuke sees two people arguing and decides to fix their friendship by beating them up with Crazy Diamond. But then Josuke realizes that even Crazy Diamond can't heal people's hearts, and that it can't bring back the dead since he just inadvertently killed the two. At the bottom of the comic, there is a note saying that this Josuke is not the same one from the JoJo manga and that he will never be seen again. Now obviously, this comic is a joke and isn't meant to be canon or anything, but this does technically mean that this would be considered an alternate version of Josuke, and more specifically, Crazy Diamond. So that alternate version of The Stand is the one I would consider here to be obscure. However, since manga is the main form of JoJo's content, I feel like to get really obscure we need to look at things outside of the manga. A lot of stands originate from the collection of light novels released for the series. Each book is based on a certain part of JoJo, and the stands here fit right in with the main stands featured throughout the main series. In the Part 3 novel, Genesis of the Universe, we have a group of stand users that are other minions of Dio. First we have the stand Dark Mirage, which is said to be a humanoid crystal-shaped stand with a lens on its chest, which it uses to create illusions. It can create anything it wants, but if it has no access to light, the lens won't operate. No illustration of this stand actually exists, and we only have a picture of the stand user Mikal and the illusions she creates. Another stand is Satanic Coupler, a stand which takes the form of a train. Its user, Absalom, can actually change the form of the train to fit anything that he can think of, and he reads the minds of the Joestar group to think of different forms for the train to take. One example is when he reads Iggy's mind, and the train takes on a monstrous appearance based on how a dog perceives a train. The train can also shrink down and try to enter a person's body to kill them as a last resort. The last stand from this book is the titular Genesis of the Universe, a stand bound to a book that contains all wisdom and history inside of it. This one also goes by the name Ptah, making it another Egyptian god stand. When the user Ani reads something aloud from the book, it can come to life. Some examples of these are a group of Roman soldiers, as well as living versions of statues like the Sphinx or even Egyptian gods themselves. The user has even kept himself alive with an ancient method of reincarnation that he reads from the book. Only one thing can be summoned at a time, and if a page of the book is damaged or unreadable, whatever was written there can't be summoned. In the Part 5 novel, Golden Heart Golden Ring, we have three more stand abilities. First is The Cure, a rabbit-shaped stand that can absorb injuries and ailments from people. The more pain it absorbs, the larger it grows until it finally becomes huge and goes berserk. Another is Public Image Limited, a stand bound to a sniper rifle bullet. It's extremely powerful, but every time it's used, it drains energy from its user, Rigatoni, which means he's risking death with every shot he takes. As a trade-off, the bullet also absorbs stand energy from whoever it hits equal to the energy he put in. So Rigatoni tries to only target stand users in order to balance out how much power he uses. The last stand is Joy Division, which can switch whatever the user touches between his hands. This ability was thought to be useless, but the user eventually trained to delay his ability, meaning that after he touches two objects, he can choose a time in the next three hours to switch them on command. With this power, it actually becomes pretty dangerous, and in one scene, he teleports some naval mines on top of Giorno and Mista. In the Part 4 novel, The Book, Fourth Another Day, there are two stands. The first is The Book, which contains all of the memories of the user Takuma. Anytime someone reads one of the memories, they experience it themselves. Takuma uses this to make people read through life-threatening experiences he's had, which will actually happen to the reader and injure them. Takuma can also reread things from his own memories, and by reading memories of himself successfully doing a task such as knife throwing, he can train himself through repetition to master that task. The other stand in this book is Memory of Jet, which takes the form of fog that can cover a person or location. Once this happens, anything inside is impossible to see or gain access to. Next is Purple Haze Feedback, a novel that takes place after Part 5 starring Fugo. The stands here come from various members of Passione. 
The first is Voodoo Child, the stand of the book's secondary character, Sheila E. This stand lets her create lips anywhere with her stand punches. The lips can repeat anything that is thought or said near them, so it functions like a recording device. The lips also have physical utility, such as biting objects that are nearby. Then we have All Along the Watchtower, a colony stand based on a deck of cards. Its main skill is espionage, by slipping into hard-to-reach areas. However, the ability is actually extremely useful, since any damage dealt to the stand is transferred between all 53 cards before it reaches the user, making him nearly invincible to attacks on his stand. Next is Rainy Day Dream Away, which takes the form of Rain. Its ability is that once a person experiences an emotion within the range of the stand, the user can lock that emotion onto the person. In one example, Fugo loses balance for a second, but has that sensation locked into him, causing him to keep tripping all over the place. Next is Dolly Dagger, which takes the form of a small dagger. Any attack that the user sustains can be partially transferred to whoever the user has reflected in the dagger's blade. No matter what kind of attack it is, 70% of it is reflected onto the target, while the user takes the remaining 30%. Next is Nightbird Flying, which looks like a small bird. It has the power to make people experience the symptoms of drug addiction, essentially turning people into mindless zombies. The book also contains an evolution for Purple Haze called Purple Haze Distortion, which has access to a stronger virus that is also capable of eating other viruses to eliminate airborne pathogens or cure people. Finally, we have Manic Depression, the stand of the main villain Massimo Volpe, leader of Pachone's Narcotic Squad. It can manipulate a body's chemical balance after it pierces it with one of its thorns. For example, it can cause someone's heart to beat so fast that it explodes. However, he can also enhance his own abilities, like boosting his adrenaline. Once he does this, his body starts to break down from overexertion. Volpe tracks down the stone mask to become a vampire, which would make him invincible while he uses his ability. One interesting thing is that Volpe is actually the brother of Tonio from Part 4, so his ability could be seen as a kind of evil version of Pearl Jam, which heals the bodies that it enters. A ton of really odd stands come from the novel George Joestar, which introduced an alternate reality where tons of characters and stands are changed. One thing to note is that for stands in this universe, they're named after movies and TV shows instead of music. The book has over 20 unique stands, as well as a ton of evolutions of returning stands. It also introduces three new kinds of abilities. Wounds, which are like rogue stand abilities that form from a person's trauma. They disappear once the source of the person's pain is destroyed. Bounds, which can combine with the environment. And Beyonds, which allow the user to control destiny. The use of Beyonds requires a person to acknowledge that they are a fictional character in the story, allowing them to break the fourth wall by changing the story itself. It really is just too much to go over in this video, since some of these stands have pretty esoteric abilities. Maybe one day when I go over this book, I can get into it. But for now, I would definitely consider any of these to be some of the most obscure in the series. Two more stands come from Rey Infinito, a short story focused on Lisa Lisa which released in the JoJo magazine. So far, there's only a rudimentary translation, but it'll do for now. One of the stands is The Lord of the Flies, which has the power to control steel flies that can pierce through people like bullets. Then there's Hopscotch, a stand that draws with chalk on the ground to create a hopscotch game, and if you don't hop on one foot, you fall into a sinkhole. But when it comes to light novel stands, I feel like they can't really be that obscure, right? Even though not a lot have read them, they're still decently knowable. Maybe the most obscure light novel stand of all, however, would be one from a light novel that never actually came out. One of the books I was talking about earlier is The Book, Fourth Another Day, which is a sequel to Part 4. The creation of this book actually has a pretty interesting history. The author, Otsuichi, says that he had written 2,000 pages that he ended up throwing out. These are part of an early and completely different version of the book called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tulp. In 2002, a 30-page preview of the book was published in a special issue of Weekly Shonen Jump, 
which is unrecognizable compared to the story of the final novel, which wouldn't release until 2007. The main character in this story is a boy named Kaoru, who has an unnamed stand ability that allows him to spawn objects underneath his skin. He can seemingly create whatever he wants, but he has to cut open his skin to access the items. Behind him you can see the aura of a horned demon, which is presumably the true form of his stand which never makes a full appearance. But with everything we've talked about so far, they sort of just originate from JoJo's stories themselves. That feels a bit too easy, so the real obscure stands I think would be the ones not tied to traditional media at all. In 2017, an official escape room attraction opened called JoJo's Bizarre Escape The Hotel. It's themed around Part 3, with players taking on the role of one of the Crusaders to solve puzzles and escape. The story of the attraction is that they're trapped in a hotel by the stand House of Holy, an ability that turns the hotel into a labyrinth. Another escape room was also made in 2020 called Escape from Jojo's Bizarre Museum. This one is themed around Part 5, with the story having the group trapped inside a museum by a Pashone member named Scatola, who stand the shelter steals their abilities. Here's another. In 1992, a series of drama CDs was published that adapted Part 3 of Jojo. This was actually the first ever adaptation of JoJo, even predating the Stardust Crusaders OVAs. It only covers a small amount of Part 3, but it does have some interesting additions like an original fight between Jotaro and Whole Horse. But not only that, there was actually a brand new stand user that appeared here which the group encounters in India. The user is an old man who's never given a name, but his stand is called Strange Relation. It takes the form of a street organ that he plays music from to control other stand users. Interestingly, this guy doesn't actually work for Dio, he's just doing this attack on his own. Another obscure stand comes from the Japan-only Famicom game, Famicom Jump 2 The Strongest 7, a crossover game that features characters from seven different Shonen Jump manga. It has Jotaro as well as some other Part 3 characters in it. Each jump protagonist has a scenario in the game based on them. In Jotaro's scenario, there is a town that comes under attack from a stand user with the power to turn people into stone when he punches them. In 2012, an event was held in Japan called the Hirohiko Araki Special Jojo Exhibition. It featured some original illustrations as well as a showcase of Araki's art. Oddly enough, however, this exhibition actually featured a completely original stand called Remote Romance. It was created in response to the event selling out, and gives some kind of in-universe reason for people viewing the exhibition remotely. On select nights, remote romance would physically appear in the gallery, and walk around viewing the exhibits. People who accessed the gallery's Hangouts livestream on Google Plus could view the gallery from the stand's perspective through a camera on its face. Some people could also control the stand, in which case their face would appear on the stand's screen. The stand also surprisingly comes with its own backstory. It was originally wielded by a legendary hacker named Dixie Flatline, and after he died, his stand remained on the internet, possessing anyone who accessed the server he was on. There's actually another stand like this that was created for an event. In 2018, another exhibition was opened titled Ripples of Adventure. For this, Araki designed a new stand called Jojo Sapiens. The event featured a poll that would ask Jojo fans various questions about themselves and Jojo. The story was that Jojo Sapiens itself was controlling this poll with its ability in order to create the ultimate Jojo human based on the information. This person would then become its user. The questions range from topics from Jojo like their favorite stand or part, to personal questions like their age, weight, and gender, and even philosophical questions like their response to the trolley problem. After the data was collected, the user of Jojo Sapiens was designed, and was shown portrayed by a real-life model. In 2012, a MOOC, or a cross between a magazine and a book titled Jojo Menon was published. Basically, a MOOC is a magazine-like publication that's meant to stay on shelves longer than a normal magazine would. This MOOC contains artwork, interviews, and articles to commemorate Jojo's 25th anniversary. Some of these are more well-known, like the famous meeting between Araki and Jotaro's inspiration, Clint Eastwood. But what I want to talk about here is a meeting between Araki and a contemporary artist named Akira Yamaguchi. 
His painting style is meant to resemble older styles of Japanese art. For their meeting, Yamaguchi created a painting called Campus Bizarre Adventure Conquest at School, which features two original stands named Berry Berry Skull and Assy the Horse. Despite the names, they actually kind of look awesome. They are the stands of a student council president and sports club captain, respectively. Berry Berry Skull is a short-range stand with the dexterity of a samurai. And Assy the Horse has long range and can move at the speed of a motorcycle. When Berry Berry Skull rides Assy the Horse, his range is extended. This is done so that the student council president can send her stand to discipline students across the school without having to leave class. Okay, now we're down to some of our last obscure stands. These originate from an interview between Araki and a Japanese TV personality named Shoko Nakagawa. She's actually quite well known, and you may know her as the singer of the two openings of the anime Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagann. She's also a huge fan of Jojo, and has somewhat of an obsession with Jotaro in particular. During the interview, there's a section where the two sit down to design stands of Jotaro and Shoko's hypothetical children. Shoko designs a stand named Giganto Stomach, the stand of her and Jotaro's daughter, Jokotan Kujo. Jokotan herself has a freakish appearance that is a combination of Jotaro's face with Shoko, which she says is due to her love for Jotaro and her strong DNA. The stand takes the form of three floating heads that spit up gastric acid. The stand also has the ability to fly to Jotaro wherever he is to make sure he isn't having an affair. Araki designed a stand called the Love Note, which belongs to Jo Kujo, Jotaro and Shoko's son. The book essentially functions like the Death Note, except whatever two people are written in the book are bound to be married. Often the victims of the Love Note will kill each other to escape its effects, meaning it also functions like the actual Death Note at times. And that's all of the obscure stands that I could think of. Going over all of this really does remind you of just how big the JoJo series is. It's also really interesting to see how many stands originate from completely supplementary material like interviews and exhibitions. The question I posed at the beginning of this video, of course, is subjective. But of these, what do you consider to be the most obscure? Comment below if you learned anything new, and if you have an idea for a future video similar to this, let me know. If you want to be updated on new videos and chapters, join the Hum and Beat Discord using the link in the description. To receive rewards like Discord perks and some uncut videos, you can support the channel on Patreon. And finally, for future videos, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and up patrons. Thank you to Tony, The Owl God, Alex Ramirez, Doorbell, Monkman, Ashton Joseph Miller, Crayon, Rigo Vids, Zucato, Shane Giger, Sentai, Pumpkin Doge, Mero, Bailey Smile, Ali, Almighty Quark, Oof, PBASVG, Kauri, Jojo Agogo, Tucker Gold, Halil, Cake, Gatlin Grove, and Vess.